everyone, how are you doing? I hope you all are having a fantastic Monday. As I uh, pull this music down, I am still having some technical issues, so I'm flying blind and the, uh, and the, the music at the moment. So I hope it, hope it all worked out. <laughs> But anyway, I hope you guys have all had a fantastic weekend. Happy Monday. Happy uh, pre-archetypes uh, Tuesday. <laughs> I am looking forward to it. I hope I know that all of you are as well. If you are a squatty and you're not, then you and I are going to have issues. But anyways, welcome to Facts and Two Cents. As you know, we're a channel that supports the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Harry, Megan, Archie, Baby Lily, Mama Doria, Pula Guy, the Chickens, Mama Mia, um, all of us here at Sussex Squad uh, community. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we, you know, our faves are quiet, but you know, Shutter Island, there's always mess going on in Shutter Island, which I am deliberately staying away from. I refuse to give any... Um, any air to it, so I'm not even going to mention it. I'm sure others probably will, but I am not. But anyways, our faves are doing great. Uh, Spare is, you know, obviously topping books, um, pre-orders, and uh, number one bestseller already. <laughs> two months away from you know gracing us with its presence of course shutter island is falling off the cliff of you as usual and all sorts of nonsense are coming out and um you know lies upon lies upon lies but the squad is sussex is going or at least ari going to the uk to promote like why would he want to go to the uk to promote when everybody knows it's all it's coming out what is there to promote i mean the tabloids are promoting it all for him they don't have to spend one cent in promotions because the tabloids are doing it anyway. And just about everyone else is talking about it. So there's nothing to promote. Everybody knows it's there and everyone is pre-ordering. So much to the chagrin of those who hate our faves, but we don't care. <laughs> we love that for them. Let them stew, twist their knickers and pull their, pull on their pearls and or clutch their pearls and throw, you know, incandescently throwing plates across the room. We don't care. We are, we are totally fine with our faves being number one and them crying about it and whining about it as they usually are doing. So anyways, our faves are awesome and that's all I care about. <laughs> And that is why today I was like, you know what, let me continue my little series. Uh, well, not little series, it's just two parts. <laughs> I was like, series? It's only two parts. Uh, Harry and Meghan are the best royals. And uh, we had, there was tons and tons and tons of proof. I mean, this is like, I feel like, you know, this is definitely um, preaching to the choir. It's so funny. Um, um, uh Lydia I think she, Lydia posted something to me to the point of I didn't really need convincing but you know um but something like you know but I enjoyed it anyway because you know again it, or something like that she wrote sorry Lydia I think I completely misquoted you but um and she's totally correct because this is literally you guys are the choir this is preaching to the choir but even to the choir, sometimes we need a little reminder um, about all the wonderful things our faves are doing because a lot of times, you know, there's so much happening. There's so many things vying for our attention. There's so many things that are negative that sometimes when the negative come thing come, things come up, we forget all the, the great things our faves are doing and then we start, you know, um, pulling out receipts to counter the negativity and all of that stuff, when really a lot of times we just literally need to focus on the wonderful things our faves are doing and not pay attention to the nonsense that's out there. And so this is why this, you know, the first part I did, um, and this is part two, which is why I think this is so important that we remember, you know, and then if we didn't know, Literally, go to Arch go to Archwell. It's all there, you know. So I'm just gonna talk through some of them and um, just remind us. Like our faves are doing great. They are booked. They are busy. They don't have time for the nonsense. And we just need to a lot of times just need to remember that. And then when we're on social media, whatever platform we're using, we can go back and just pull receipts or whatever it is we need to do from Archwell, you know, and not say like, okay, I need to retweet someone, their nonsense. No, it's like someone tweets something that's nonsense. 
we just need to go Archwell. Oh, wow, look, Archwell is doing this. They are doing this. And usually they're doing a lot, even though they sometimes forget that they have a website they need to advertise all the wonderful things they're doing, which is why this last these two episodes are so important because Archwell seemed to have forgotten they were doing all of this wonderful stuff and forgot to put it on their on their um their website and it's like oh well you have a website please use it we need to advertise all your wonderful stuff so i'm so happy they remembered <laughs> and now we are talking about them and we don't have to talk about the other nonsense so one of the you know again how are you making all the best we are proof and here we go um archetypes <laughs> <laughs> last last the last episode we talked about just all of just their um their um charity initiatives and and organizations that they are part of and they are supporting this time we're featuring a lot about you know what they're doing specifically with their um creativity and all of, all of that stuff and the awards and stuff like that that they're getting maybe i shouldn't give that away but the first um you know for this episode Top reasons, oh, the wonderful things that they're doing and Megan specifically is doing with Archetypes. And again, today's Monday, so tomorrow is Archetypes Tuesday. And so I know tomorrow at 11.30, we will be meeting and chatting about what we got out of Archetypes Tuesday. And so I will be up bump at 6 a.m. <laughs> ready and waiting for my audit um for my episode to drop and so whatever she's going to be talking about tomorrow it's going to be amazing as all the others have been amazing and i'm telling you archetypes is you know i mentioned before like this is such a public service and women who have no interest in royal anything and a lot of them are just not even into podcasts at all and they talk about this so many times on twitter that they're not even interested in podcasts and then they come across megan's podcast and they're like wow this is so amazing and so that has been the wonderful thing and so many people talk about them just feeling seen and just the conversations have been so intelligent and so meaty and so cut to the chase and cut to the heart and cut, i mean it dissects so many things and it's just and also too megan's wonderful voice everybody talks about her podcast podcast voice there's just such a warmth and a care and a love and just a respect that she gives to each of her guests that anybody feels like wow this is my friend we're just talking we're just hanging out you know and of course last last episode we learned she's 43 percent nigerian so all our nigerian squaddies have been falling all over themselves and we're not jealous at all you know <laughs> But it has just been amazing just seeing, going through and, you know, listening to these episodes again and again and again because they're just so good. And of course, every one that comes out is my favorite. So, <laughs> so the angry black woman was my favorite from last week. So it goes up until tomorrow when tomorrow's episode becomes my favorite. Sorry. <laughs> I am just fickle that way. And I think a lot of us are fickle that way too. So I'm happy I'm not the only fickle person around. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, this is, you know, and I, I want to know what she would do. Maybe just continue with archetypes for, you know, maybe season two, because again, this is a 12 C, uh, series um, podcast. And so is she going to continue with maybe male archetypes? Someone mentioned, they're like, well, you know, there are archetypes about men too. You know, that could be one. Someone mentioned like the, for example, the spare that Harry's going to be writing about his archetype, you know? And so it'll be so interesting to see where she takes us after this, um, after this 12 episode is over. And then, you know, does she do a book? You know, maybe another children's book, a romance. Maybe she does a bio autobiography. I mean, who knows where she goes? You know, as long as the Lord keeps them here, the, the sky is the limit, really. You know, they she even talked about like a um, a rom com with Netflix. You know, of course, we're still hoping for Pearl. You know, hoping Pearl has another home, a uh, find a new home. So who knows what's gonna happen? And also their docu series. So hey, 
who knows but i am excited for where this all goes but i'm telling you spotify is um archetypes is amazing and i mean hello who well who in the royal family could compare with this this is awesome and then you know obviously if that's not enough we had this to drop on us <laughs> Spare, you know, and of course, and the Shutter Island is falling all over themselves. <laughs> what about this? You know, and I am like, talk about another reason why they are the best, you know. It is just amazing, you know, everybody. So many authors actually been responding to this, like, just the name is like, wow you know uh, so many others are, are just saying wow that name there's something about that name there's just so much power in that name and having harry be the one to have use it is just so powerful and it just like it's just the power in in him using it and also the devastation of that word and it being applied to a person and especially applied to a child and you see that already you know even today i came across a tweet where someone was mentioning that the press was um saying all these horrible things about princess charlotte princess charlotte is a child i've talked about this numerous times here about just being so upset about the cambridges putting their children in front of the press and um, doing all this stuff, especially going to um, the queen's funeral with the press and like they want, you know, they want them there so that they can be, you know, whatever, this great thing for the, for the people and, and shoulder the burden of um, just, you know, being that, I guess, to tug on emotions, I guess, for the British people. And what happens today? There are all these tabloids writing these fake stories about little Charlotte. Little Charlotte is like, I don't know, how old is Charlotte? Like six, seven? I, I, I don't know. I don't know their ages specifically, but she's somewhere in that little eight, in that there, at a six or seven or something. And they, like, I literally came across four different articles about a seven year old. And it's just like, are you serious? And again, this is the thing. And this is why I'm so happy that Harry's writing this book because maybe, just maybe, he could spare these children. Maybe they could open the eyes of their parents that they, you know, if they, I don't understand, you know, they've lived with Harry, so they they must have seen what he had gone through. Or either that or they were so blinded, as well, especially, you know, the fact that William was getting the benefit of having a spare, you know, but the fact that they could be writing negative articles about a seven-year-old. Again, these children are spares to George. And even at this age, they're all, you already see the, the narrative forming with little Louis, with that little episode at, at one of those Jubilee events. And then Charlotte, you know, you know, and now, I mean, how do you write a negative article about a seven-year-old, you know? And it's just like, it's unreal. So... If nothing else, this spares the next generation and it hopefully opens a nation's eye who, eyes who have co-signed this abusive behavior and this abusive labeling of children. And, you know, hopefully it opens people's eyes like this is not okay. This is abuse. It is child abuse. And so... I, you know, I look forward to it, <laughs> definitely. And I know a lot of, a lot of us, I mean, every squaddy is looking forward to this. So that I can say with confidence, you know. Um, also, another reason why they are uh, the best, obviously, Invictus Games, you know, Prince Harry, I'm telling you. Prince Harry creating the Invictus Games is one of the greatest things that any, you know, especially someone uh, for those in the military community and their families. You know, obviously we know that in 2013 he was at the um, the Warrior Games in the U.S. and just was like, wow, it would be great if I were able to do this, you know, in the U in the U.K. and now this is worldwide and I think now it's more popular than the Warrior Games. I mean, it is amazing the work and the dedication i mean team you know now adding last um last 
games i think it was 16 countries participated now um they are really in with um uh colombia and nigeria there's so many posts from them especially now they're in nigeria helping the nigerian athletes and they it is amazing um the things that they're doing and you know and there are so many different programs again apart from the games so um they are doing amazing things off obviously we know that they've teamed up up with better up where veterans can get free coaching three free coaching that can help them through you know whatever challenges they're going through that help them to sort out you know figure out their lives as they go through their th therapies and all of those things um free because prince harry obviously is the chief um um one of the officers there at um at, at better up and he has hooked them up um, to get free coaching. So that is so amazing. And again, um, as we know, before Queen Betty decided, um, before Queen Betty passed away, um, Harry and Meghan were in, um, were in, uh, Germany to kick off the one year to the games. Obviously, we know that it's going to be in Dusseldorf, Germany. And I'm going to take off my scroller thing at the bottom. So if you have not subscribed to us yet, if you're new here um, and you have not subscribed, please go ahead and do so right now as you see this and click the notification bell so that you can, um, you know, know when we drop a video. And please like and share this video uh, so that we can grow our community and um, join our video. Join our community i should say join our channel so that you can um it's a way that you can support if you so wish to support the channel monthly so i'm going to take away the banner so that way we can read everything at the bottom because the banner blocks things there we go taking away the banner will bring it back if i remember i tend to forget i will bring it back later if i remember that but you know, you know what to do. Go ahead and do that. But anyway, so um, we know that before Queen Betty passed away, Queen Betty II passed away, Harry and Meghan, actually the day before she passed away, they were in Dusseldorf, Germany to kick off the one year to the games. And uh, um, Archwell, um, this is from Archwell, so I said, Prince Harry and uh, the Duke of Sussex, uh, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, traveled to Germany along with the Duchess of Sussex to kick off the official countdown to the next Invictus game in Dusseldorf. Is set to host the games in 23. Dusseldorf is set to host the games in 2023, bringing together 500 competitors from more than 20 nations to compete in a series of adaptive sports. And obviously, this was them there, just happy and smiling. Look at them; it's just so cute. Um, and um, on the side, Dusseldorf, um, their Twitter account tweeted, what a day yesterday. Dusseldorf showed that the city is ready to become a home for respect, which is the tag um, for the games. The impression from our official launch event will accompany us for a long time. We cannot wait to welcome you back in one year's time for IG23 let's do it and of course that's going to be september 9 to 16 in 2023 right there in dusseldorf and how we remember harry and megan were there they did the event they had like a q a a couple q a things harry did um a speech we have not heard um they didn't release the details of it but we've seen pictures of it but i'm telling you with invictus games it is amazing um just harry just he just this is his baby and he just you know something is successful again i talked about this before you know a project is successful when you are able to in give that to someone or many someone's and they just embrace it so much that for them it's their project <laughs> whether harry is there or not it is theirs they have just embraced it and just taken ownership of it i mean you should hear the um the vancouver games the people at the vancouver games they are so amazing this is not even about harry at all for them this is about them owning the games and just being so excited to welcome the um the veterans there to be a, to look you know for people to learn about their communities to do the the, the sports i mean everybody is in from the prime minister the local ministers the local indian community um there it is amazing how they are just so gone ho for these games so that'll be in canada in 2025 but it is just this 
I'm telling you, they they're so. I remember one of part of Harry's speech um, at the end of the Hague Games. He talked about you know interviewing people and um, just so many people saying that the games, Invictus Games, really saved their lives. That is not. That is not just talk. That is so true. One of the things that's very, very true is like how many vets take their lives per day. It, uh, the number is really, really high. And this is one of the things. I mean, even JJ, um, who is Harry's, um, one of Harry's really great friends. And he was actually working with the BBC to announce the games, um, you know, doing um, highlights from the games for in The Hague. He was talking about, you know, if it wasn't for Invictus, he may not be here. It really, really saved his life. And so many other vets say the same thing. I'm telling you, this Invictus Games is just, it has changed so many men and women's lives, give them hope, give them purpose, really give them a life, give them their life back. And so it is absolutely amazing. And again, one of the reasons why Harry and Meghan are the best. This is amazing how he has been able to do this and the team he has assembled around him to run with him, run, you know what I mean? It is just, it's so amazing. You're watching David, at, um, David Weissman in, in Nigeria and he actually did a post today um, about the Nigerian Invictus in Nigeria because we I saw we saw so many pictures with David there and it's just it's awesome it is absolutely awesome how they are all invested in this again these are all vets and they are all invested in um, their wellness and all invested in helping each other to get well and so kudos to prince harry and also for megan they're supporting megan you know has always been supportive even before she knew harry very much supportive of veterans and um you know she did a tour with the uso and all of that stuff so kudos to them um another reason why they are most amazing megan is going to be doing a speaking engagement um celebrating the power of women and this is it says the um this is from archer says the women's fund of central indiana a special interest fund of Central Indiana Community Foundation, CICF, is set to host the Power of Women, an evening with Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, this November. Um, the Women's Fund is committed to being a catalyst for ambition, encouragement, and change the belief of the power of disruptive philanthropy to seek new solutions and solutions and innovative innovative approach to old problems in order to find new results the proceeds from this event allow women uh allow women's fund to further its mission that began in 1996 to create equitable and sustainable change for all women and girls no matter their race place or identity and so this is going to be amazing. And I learned recently that um, actually, I think it was 2019, I think, Michelle Obama was their, um, was their person. They, they, um, they had her as their guest speaker or guest for the evening, whatever. And so apparently this is something that, you know, powerful women have been a part of. And so this is wonderful. And um, the, from the power of women, they says, the women fan is proud to welcome Megan, the Duchess of Sussex to Indianapolis. The Duchess is a mother feminist champion of human rights. She is a lifelong advocate for women and girls, a constant threat she weaves through humani humanitarian and business ventures. Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Sandy Sasso, an acclaimed writer and community leader, will serve as moderator for the evening. Rabbi Sa um, Sandy Sasso is the first woman rabbi ordained by the Reconstructionist Movement and previously held the Beth El Zedek in, in, in Indianapolis. Um, uh, I should have um, gone research her, but I haven't. So I, maybe the next episode, I'll find out exactly all about Rab. Oh, it's Ra not Rabbi. It's Rabbi. Rabbi Sandy Sasso. Did I just say Rabbi? Rabbi Sandy Sasso. <laughs> Gosh, battle. Rabbi Sandy Sasso. Anyways, um, 
so it says tables for power of women oh my goodness tables for power of women um, are available for purchase to groups and organizations that support the mission of women's fund and again um we mentioned before um the tables are five thousand um oh i'm sorry the on the bottom right it says the tax deductible amount for each each ten thousand dollar table is five thousand dollars so you get a table for ten thousand you get a five thousand dollar check back uh, for your taxes so there <laughs> um but anyways uh for ten thousand dollars you can get you can gather a group and um you know be a part of this event so this is awesome i mean i expect to see megan doing a lot more of this um you know before the um before COVID happened, this is what I thought, um, you know, and many people had uh, reported too, that they would be, she, she, both her and Harry actually, would be doing a lot of these speaking engagements. And uh, um, this is a great way to, you know, to be able to speak to women, to be able to, you know, really be there and inspiring women all over the country and, uh, and men, um, you know, as Harry, I expect that from him as well. We've seen quite a bit of that from Harry as part of Better Up. So this is the first, um, really, really one of the first ones we're seeing with Megan, um, we know that she wasn't able to do the variety one because of, again, the queen's death. And so that had to be postponed and then she wasn't able to be part of that event. So it is great to see this. And so I expect to see more of this. And another video the oh, miss awesome is Prince Harry in Africa. <laughs> this was very much like, well, like we saw the, first of all, the, we saw a picture of Prince Harry and Somebody at the airport posted a picture of Prince Harry in Africa and we're like, what? When did he get to Africa? And yes, of course, Prince Harry was in Africa um, <laughs> just before. And I think that was the, the end of August. Um, he was in Africa um, in his role as a president of African Parks, and he was escorting a bunch of um, U.S. senators and, I guess, Congress people, but mostly senators um, and philanthropists and um, around to, to three different nations um, that really that have parks that African parks um, that they have. Um, they basically take over the park for what 20 years they um take care of each parks for 20 years um get it up to where it's really um benefiting the animals and also the community around it get it really you know on its foot and um then hand it back to the country and hopefully it continues to thrive from there so um that is what african parks do they take the um they take over the park and manage the park which is what they really do they manage the, these parks um and then you know really build it up and take care of it and make sure animal and people can live coexist together and um no one is you know killing the other um but this was so amazing um and you can see harry at the top with the african parks team and the bottom uh, bottom left with um <laughs> the prime minister of rwanda paul kagami and then harry with this um his little uh, visor thing um that i think that was part of an undersea um thing that he was watching there and this is harry in the third picture on um going from left to right um with senators it, um, in, uh, I think this part was in our, uh, Mozambique. Um, so it is just amazing. And, and um, obviously, um, Sussex, uh, <laughs> all of a sudden I forgot what I'm talking about. Archwell, Sussex website, Archwell. Um, they wrote up about it. It says, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, have been involved with African Parks since 2016. Uh, yep. Uh, this summer in his role as president, he and African Parks CEO Peter Fernhead welcome and co-hosted a group of U.S. official conservationists, philanthropists, as they toured protected wildlife and nature areas in Mozambique and Rwanda. During the trip, the visiting delegation 
and learned about the best practices in protected areas, management, and the organization, the organization's innovative model, which brings together local communities, government stakeholders, and conservation experts. Prince Harry and leaders from African parks also traveled separately to Curfew National Park in Zambia to get firsthand update on the park's progress. And um, it is amazing the work that they are doing um, to take care of these parks. And then, you know, again, they don't, they're not taking over the park and owning the park. They are taking care of it for 20 years and then handing it back to the government, um, whichever country it is, and, you know, in better shape than they got it, which is the goal to get them in better shape and then hand them back over where all involved can thrive and, you know, be successful at it and then also to the community benefits from all of the you know the tourism and all of those things the community can really make a living um either either in working from the for the park or you know whatever resources that can be had from the parks that the community benefits from that as well which is what african parks is about so um kudos to prince harry and his incredible work at african parks so um Yes! Another reason why Harry and Meghan are the best royals. They're not just hanging out at home and doing nothing. They are really involved in. And I love the fact that Harry was playing host, <laughs> or at least co-host, to these uh, U.S. officials. And it's just like, yep, Harry is, Harry is, you know, he's working with the big men. You know, and again, that's him with um, prime, um, the president of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, down in the bottom left. So that is just awesome. Another reason why they are the awesome, um, they're the best royals is that people are recognizing their work. They, you know, whatever they do, you know, they are being recognized for the incredible work they're doing. You know, obviously, we saw them. Oh, and I forgot to pull this one in. I realized they received an NAACP award for their their work, and um, obviously, um, in, in in also in the fight for um, you know racial justice. Um, and here, this is a an a, a award that they will be receiving from the uh, Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights, and it's it was so wonderful. It's like when we saw the you know I saw the Kerry Kennedy post on Twitter. It was like. <gasps> Wow, this is awesome. And only to realize they knew about this since March. You know, since March they um they you know awarded them, but the the um or nominated them, whatever, how you say it. Um they knew they were gonna get this award, and the award had doesn't happen until December, December 6th. So in New York, yes, hopefully I get to see them. Um <laughs> But um, it is just, again, recognizing the incredible work that Harry and Meghan are doing. It says President, uh, President, Prince Harry and Meghan, President Harry and Meghan, mm, President Meghan, I like that sound. But Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, were recently named the 2022 Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Ripple of Hope Award Laureate in recognition of their work in racial justice, mental health, and other social impact initiatives through Archwell Foundation. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex will be honored in December alongside previously announced laureates, um, Frank Baker, co-founder and managing partner in and Cirrus, Brian Monahan, chair of the board of Banker, um, chairman of the board and chief executive officer of Bank of America and Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. Um, and so Carrie Kennedy tweeted about this. She says, I am I am so delighted to announce that you can Duchess of Sussex are in this year's um, RFK Human Rights um, Laurettes in recognition for their work on racial justice, mental health, and many Im uh, social impact initiatives to art. Well, a little bit take on what um, Harry and Meghan wrote. I am thrilled to celebrate these incredible laureates at our, uh, our upcoming ROH Gala of uh, for RFK Human for at RFK Human Rights. Please join us on December sixth in New York for an evening honoring bravery. Insp inspiring change 
and exposing injustice. So kudos, and I love that people are recognizing their work. And that, I mean, I'm telling you, this is one of the reasons that it was so important for Harry and Meghan to not be on Shutter Island because the people who are really making change and are out there um, really advocating for change and are really making it happen are recognizing their work. It's like, you know, you recognize your people, you recognize those who are doing the work that you are doing, you know? And so it just like, I am so excited that people are recognizing their work and people who are really out there fighting for change as well, you know? So yeah birds of a feather that's not always just the negative birds of the feather in this case this positive they are flocking together and i love this absolutely love this so kudos harry and megan are the best royals and of course another way we know they're the best royals because prince harry was also asked to um be the uh speaker um you know the the main speaker for uh honoring nelson mandela on uh, nelson mandela international day which is celebrates his birthday and we all remember harry and megan and Ma harry doing that amazing speech about nelson mandela and even just about his mom and you know just um what she had gotten out of um just being there with uh, Nelson Mandela. It is just, it was a fantastic, we of course, are, you know, <laughs> those pictures are amazing of Harry and Meghan walking in and being in the audience and Harry being on stage talking. And it just, it was such an incredible moment. And I know such an incredible honor that, that they chose Prince Harry to be, um, to speak, um, there and um it says prince harry the duke of sussex i uh, was invited at the u.n general assembly to honor in honor of nelson mandela international day the duke spoke of mandela's contribution to the world his personal connection to africa and the importance of finding meaning and purpose in the middle midst of struggle and so um you know obviously it goes on if you you know on the side click the side click the the link and you'll find out more about it but what an incredible incredible honor harry's uh first time speaking at the u.n general assembly and of course we know megan spoke at the u.n before before she even met harry so megan did been there done that <laughs> but it was great to see um her there just i you know supporting her hubby and being cute and adorable so yeah harry and megan being the best royal and of course we know that those on shutter island were jealous and tried to do a <laughs> u.n general assembly adjacent didn't happen i mean queen died so she sort of appended a whole bunch of stuff and then there you know u.n adjacent stuff was kind of a bust anyway <laughs> because they had promised all these you know celebrity people who just came and did, you know one just kind of did it via a video and the other one came and dryly spoke and the reporter was like i just closed my computer and left it was kind of really wonderful and dry humor that comes from down under <laughs> but um anyways they were covering just in the others um you know foray into that and it was just kind of dry so anyways our faves you know again he was invited he didn't create an event and invite himself as those on shutter island intend to do he was invited to come so awesome yes and another fantastic way that we know that they are the best royals is their connection to the leaders of the future the leaders of now as megan said in her speech but also the leaders of the future and um who can forget this beautiful event um at the one young world with megan in her fabulous red outfit and harry on stage and megan's speech again talking about you know so many times that we look for the future we, we talk to young leaders and it's about the future and reminding them that no the now is important as well being present being in the moment with what's happening now and celebrating their achievements now you know and so ashwa says megan the duchess of sussex gave a keynote speech at your one young world uh, summit in Manchester at the event 
88 incredible young world delegates participated in a round table with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Together, they conversed about ways to help advance gender equality and inclusion in an effort to build a better future for the younger generations. And that's them at the top. Um, so, and oh my gosh, I love these pictures. <laughs> They're just so beautiful. I love that. And I love Sinead. I love Sinead. It's so funny, Sinead and uh, Megan are rocking red. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. So, um, yeah. And of course, you know, this was a couple of days before Queen Betty died and just appended everything. But I, you know, who could forget this? And what an incredible speech that uh, Megan gave to the and they it's so funny watching their um response on twitter they just got so much out of this speech it was wonderful they connected and megan was able to connect in so many ways whether they're a single mother whether they're mothers whether kids feeling like oh my gosh you have that imposter syndrome there she touched on all of that and they related to all of it so it was just really fantastic so kudos to megan and harry once again the best royals and we talked about this in the last episode again with the awards um you know that you know, along with the NAACP and then the Robert um, Kennedy Award, they this happened earlier the year, and um, there, um, the president of Archwell um, Foundation, the president of the foundation part, um, or this, what is he, the CEO or the president? I always forget. Um, he actually went and picked this award up because Harry and Meghan weren't able to attend in New York. So he went and picked this up. And so um, it was the Oshawa Foundation Accept Partnership Award from Frontline Refugee Organization. The Human Rights Coalition present, presented Oshawa Foundation with their Partner Organization Award for advocacy on behalf of the financial support for at-risk Afghans, as well as military veterans who serve in Afghanistan. The foundation remains in deep gratitude for the partnership of with Human First, um, whose mission has helped thousands since last year. The organization continues to provide food, shelter, medical care, and disaster relief on the ground, as well as to pilot initiatives aimed at providing educational opportunities for girls above grade six and to bolster statewide advocacy for Afghan in need. Wow, that's a mouthful. And um, so they, Archwell definitely, um, you know, financially supported this organization along with several other organizations that they have partnership partnered with that has helped um, the Afghan community who obviously because of what happened there had to leave, you know, run out of Afghanistan, you know, for their lives. And so there are lots and lots of organizations that um, along with Human First that um, the Sussexes have, I think actually they, I think it was four organizations. I think they are part of, they were supporting or at least donated to that were helping Afghan refugees. So, and I, it's so funny. I always love this award. It's just so classy. <laughs> it is just so classy. Human rights, um, Human First Coalition presents, um, is pleased to honor Archwell Foundation and its co-founders, Prince Harry and Meghan, Duke and Duchess of Sussex at our New York City benefit on August 15th. And so, yeah, this is... <laughs> This was absolutely, absolutely fantastic. So, yes. Um, another reason why they are the best. And again, people recognizing birds of a feather flocking together because they do work. And so, yes, I love it. Um, and another reason they are amazing is that they have part partnered with the uh, Ast Aspen Institute. Actually, Prince Harry um, joined the Aspen Institute and is an organization that's helping to, um, you know, reveal or find solutions for all the myths and disinformation that's out there in on social media or whatever internet um, platforms there are, whether it's in the news, whether it's a social media platform, whatever. So Prince Harry uh, joined this and um, I think it was last year they, uh, they came together and they, they did research and and all of this stuff and came up with tools that can help businesses to fight this fight all the misinformation disinformation all of that stuff all that fake new stuff um especially on social platforms so 
Aspen Institute says in 2021, the Duke of Sussex, through his work at Archwell Foundation, was appointed to the Aspen Institute Commission in order on information disorder, serving as a commissioner on a panel focused on the sources and causes of the information crisis, alongside leaders from the public and private sectors, policy experts, academics, and researchers, the Aspen Institute Commission is developing recommendations to address society's growing misinformation and disinformation emergencies across government media, across government, media, civil society, and the industry. And um, we see a couple of news clips from The Hill and Newsweek says, Chris Harry will be joining, it, well, obviously did, um, the Aspen Six-Month uh, six Commission aimed at tackling misinformation. The Institute announced on Wednesday that the Duke will be joining or has joined the commission um, on information disorder. And the commission will be chaired by journalist Katie Couric, um, former cybersecurity and infrastructure uh, sector uh, security agency, CISA director, Christopher Krabs, and Rashad Robinson, who we remember um, Prince Harry has a great relationship with. Um, he's the president of Color of Change. The Institute said the panel will assemble a, to deliver recommendations for how the country can respond to this modern day crisis of faith in key institutions. And so we know that Harry and um, both Rashad and Harry have been really, especially um, going after Facebook and, uh, you know, a lot of social media platforms are really focusing a lot on just the mess that is Facebook. And, you know, now obviously Twitter is a mess and, you know, and all of that stuff. But, the, you know, a lot of, um, they were also part of um, that, you know, what is it? Stop hate for profit as well um, with Facebook. So anyway, uh, Newsweek also wrote about it, says Prince Harry has backed calls for Congress to protect journalists who hold Facebook and Instagram to account. Obviously, Facebook owns Instagram. Um, the Duke of Sussex was for the la last year part of Aspen Institute investigation into online lies. The result was an 80 page report calling for wide-ranging recommendations, including uh, protection uh, for journalists whose Facebook or Instagram research was closed down. So they were doing great work. Again, they um, came up after, I think, the six months, they came up with all these, um, you know, a big pl a plan for businesses to be able to fight this misinformation and disinformation. So kudos, Harry. You know, especially he, they should know because a lot of this, that miss and disinformation has been launched against him and Megan. So he would be an expert on that one, especially from the British press. So, um, and another way that they have been amazing <laughs> is they have teamed up and they are, uh, you know, advisors or allies or um, with a Center for Humane Technology. And it's a Center for Human Technology led by a former Google design ethicist, Tristan Harris. The Center for Human, uh, the Center for Human Technology is dedicated to radically reimagine our digital infrastructure as seen in last year's specially curated edition of Time 100. And we see that on the right. Um, Time 100 talks. Actual Foundation has worked with CHT on dialogues that create the condition for safer, more compassionate online communities. And we'll stop there. Um, and obviously we remember that talk, the Times 100 talk. And if you don't, um, it's it should still be on their, um, their YouTube uh, feed. It should still be on their YouTube page. So you can definitely, and you know what, actually I've, I'll try to pull that into and put a link to it in the show notes. So that way you can have that. Um, Anyway, so they, Tristan, um, Tristan and Safia Noble, as you can see at the bottom um, uh, there, they both were part of that and chatted with um, Harry and Meghan about, um, you know, the work that they are doing to try to reimagine a safer, kinder uh, space on the internet. Hopefully that comes soon because now that Elon Musk now owns Twitter, Oh Lord, help us all! We need to. We need a safe space, a safe space that we can go and not have to deal with the hate and the nonsense of so-called people who are into free speech, unless that free speech comes at them. So, um, 
Anyways, so um, as you can see at the bottom with their founding allies, key advisors and community, that's the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. That's at there at the bottom there in yellow. And so just a little bit about um, Center for Human Technology. It says our mission is to align technology with humanity's best interests. We envision a world with technology that respects our attention, improves our well-being, and strengthens community. Our journey began in 2023 when Tristan Harris, then a Google design ethicist, created a viral presentation, a call to minimize distraction and respect users attention. The presentation followed by two tech talks and a 60 minute interview sparked the time, sparked the time well spent movement and laid the groundwork for the founding of the Center for Humane Technology as an independent 501c3 non-for-profit in 2018. While many people are familiar with our work through Social Dilemma, and we'll talk about Social Dilemma in a second, um, our focus goes beyond the negative effects of social media. We work to expose the drivers behind um, extractive technology, staring our thoughts, behavior, and action. And we believe that by understanding the root causes of harmful technology, we can work together to build a more humane future. So that's what um, the Center for Humane Technology is about. And I, as they mentioned, um, you know, the social dilemma, if you haven't seen it, it's on, um, it's on Netflix. And so if you haven't seen it, I highly, highly, highly suggest you see it because again, it's about these, um, creatives who designed, you know, whether it's, um, like Tristan, uh, Google designers from, um, or tech techies who designed all those softwares from Google to Facebook to Instagram to Twitter, all of these people, they have created the social what we have now. And in the social dilemma, they are talking about how, you know, basically they created a monster. And now, you know, whether it's from mining information where they take our, you know, mine our information and sell it to the highest bidder, or they have, you know, the predictive tax, or they, you know, there are people specifically at these companies that are specifically there, focused on every single thing, every click you make online so that they can target whether it's advertising or whatever it is that comes at you. That's why when sometimes you feel like, oh my gosh, I just thought of my toe. And next thing you saw, you see ads for your toe pop up on social media. And you're like, well, wait a minute. I didn't even say anything. I just thought about my toe. How did I get, how did I get an ad about, you know, Go and fix your toe or getting nail polish for your toe, whatever the ad it would be. You know, how they sit there and study our behavior so much that they can target us, you know, and how um, they have designed it so that we can be, will become addicted to all of this stuff. And a lot of them are saying, you know, they will never have their kids on this. They have a lot of them that. They, they've turned off social media. They do not use it anymore because of how harmful it is. Um, and so it is shocking, uh, you know, when you see it like, oh my gosh, you know, especially if we've not had the best behavior online, they know all of it, you know. So, but anyway, the social dilemma is, it's, um, again, it's a two-time any, any award uh, winning uh, documentary. It was nominated for seven awards and he won two. It was also at... Um, Sundance and also it won a Webby Award as well. And so it is a fantastic, I mean, shocking in a lot of ways. But again, it's all of these techies who designed these, um, the things that we're using, realizing that we are, cre they've created a monster and now it's not, now not being helpful anymore is literally harming people. And so a little bit about it says the social dilemma features Silicon Valley's ex insiders explaining how social media keeps users addicted and preys on their emotions all the while making massive profits. The New York Times called the film remarkably effective in sounding the alarm about the incursion of data mining and manipulative technology into our social lives and beyond. The social dilemma has already helped an estimated 100 million people globally understand the harms and the misaligned incentives of persuasive technology, said uh, Tristan Harris of the Center for Human Technology, who is featured in the documentary. Imagine what's possible 
Now that 2.3 billion people have access to the film, including automatic sub subtitles in almost every language via YouTube. And again, over, um, they estimate about 100 million people have see viewed it and it's out in 30 languages. And so, you know, definitely if it may be still be on YouTube free or if not, it is definitely on Netflix because it's a it's a Netflix um, show. And so, yeah, so it's if you haven't seen it, see it, you know, and I've seen it and I have to go see it again because I think I've fall, fallen back into bad patterns with the Internet. So <laughs> it's just like I stay on it way too long and I get addicted. And so it definitely has wheeled me back in. So I have to watch it again to remind myself about how um, they prey on us, you know. And so, yeah. Anyway, so moving on. So this is another great way that we know that the Sussex is. And again, these are the kind of people they have aligned themselves with. Again, flocking birds of a feather, flocking together. These are change makers. And uh, that's what I love. And that's why they are the best. They are out there to make change and not just sitting there like, why is this happening? They are teamed up with people who are making changes in this world. And another reason, they are the amazing Best in the royal family, the best royals is their work with global citizen. We remember, um, especially the top picture, Harry at um, the Vax Live, which was the first concert after um, COVID um, that was in LA. It was the first one that was in LA and he was part of it. And there we see him on stage at the global citizens uh, concert there. Megan wasn't able to be there because she was heavily pregnant and she actually did a, a video for it. So, you know, a video presentation for her uh, speaking about it, but it was amazing. And of course the bottom pictures when they were in New York, <laughs> the Vax Live concert in New York and gave that incredible, incredible speech. Um, they, they both did and Harry called out big pharmaceuticals and letting people know like, no, the vaccine, we paid for it. So that means it should be for everyone. And they were trying, you know, been working to make sure that um, countries and people who want the vaccine can get the vaccine, that they're, they're delivering that vac vaccine, especially to um, countries in the third world countries who were not given vaccines. And so it's kind of like they were like leaving people to die. And, and yet in the US, they are going to waste and people don't want to take it. So these things were expiring. Meanwhile, people in, you know, African countries, Caribbean countries, you know, South Pacific countries are desperate for these vaccines that they weren't getting. So they, it was like, um, Ari and Mega were advocating. They, you know, they teamed up with the WHO, global citizens, all of that, wrote letters to prime ministers and presidents imploring them to, and also big pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer and, and, you know, Johnson Johnson and all of those to please get that vaccine to people around the world. So um, they wrote uh, about Global Citizen um, in partnership with Global Citizen, Oslo Foundation is helping to lead the worldwide effort to equitable distri uh, equitably distribute COVID-19 vaccines to the global population. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex serve as campaign chairs of Global Citizens Vax Live, the concert to reunite the world, which mobilized critical funds, more than 360 million um, for ACT, for the ACT Accelerate COVID and COVAX. And the vaccine shared program, the vaccine sharing program co-led by the World Health Organization. This partnership has been raising awareness about vaccine equity, supporting vaccine um, dose sharing, reducing COVID-19 misinformation, and improving public-private collaboration, collaboration. And also apart from, uh, apart from that, raising all that money, the Sussexes also did another one with Archie's birthday, where they, um, you know, did a fundraising drive of, um, around Archie's birthday. This is Global Citizens effort led by uh, Prince and Harry and Meghan drives 1.9 million for COVID-19 vaccine in six days. Um, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are working to ensure everyone everywhere has access to vaccines. And this is another one of their, from another one of the Global Citizens posts. Again, this is from Global Citizen. Another one of their posts says, and to accelerate, and to, I'm sorry, and to celebrate their son Archie's second birthday, they led a global fundraising effort to support Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, with, um, 
which is co-leading the COVID-19 vaccine global access, COVAX, facility to get vaccines to people in low-income countries who need them most. The initiative, thanks in part to donations matched by MasterCard Impact Fund, Sea Dream Family Foundation, and a public charity, ultimately mobilized $3.5 million. And so it is incredible the work that they've done, you know, they did, you know, advocating for it, you know, not just them, a lot of other celebrities like Selena Gomez and others, Jennifer Lopez, and a lot of them who um, performed at the concerts and stuff, that they all worked together to raise all this money to make sure that people who need the vaccine, especially in countries that are, you know, financially insecure, you know, that they can get vaccines as well. And uh, so it is just, it's amazing, amazing global effort um, that, and again, prove that they are global, they are global force and that's why they are the best. They can do things that the others cannot dream of, or at least they can dream of, but they're too lazy to do. So <laughs> again, the Sussexes do the work, you know, <laughs> the others don't. So, <laughs> But anyways, another reason why they are the best royals, you know, and we just saw a minute ago, we talked about um, Sophia Noble, Dr. Sophia Noble, Harry and Meghan um, and Archul have teamed up with the UCLA Center for Critical Internet Inquiries, kind of like sort of this sort of similar to what Tristan Harris does. And of course, um, it says Archul Foundation has established the Archwell Foundation Fund at the UCLA Center for Critical Internet Inquiry under the shared leadership and acclaimed researcher, professor, and authors, Dr. Safia Noble and Dr. Sarah T. Roberts. The fund supports research and program development as well as goals and overall mission of a C2I2 reimagining technology, championing racial and economic justice in the tech sector, and strengthening democracy through culture making and public policy work. And um, it's really awesome because, as you know, Megan actually even talked about this in her The Variety interview, just a friend giving her, um, a, you know, they, she and Harry went out to dinner or drinks with a friend during COVID, and they gave her the book by Safia Noble, Algorithms of Oppression. And she was talking about, she and Harry were in bed and she's like, you know, poking him like, did you see this? And you know, her, like, her mouth was dropping on the floor where she was reading Algorithms of Oppression. And, you know, about predictive text, you knew, right? You know, as you can see in the book, like, why are black women so, and the predictive text would put in all these negative things about black women. Basically, you know, all these, so that way to give you right off the bat a negative impression about black women. And so this book is about that, about the algorithm of oppression and how it oppresses and gives false and damaging information about black women. Um, and so we also know um, at the beginning of the year that um, apart from them receive, uh, Harry and Meghan receiving the NAACP award, they also designed an award with the NAACP. It's going to be yearly. And the first recipient was Dr. Safia Noble. It says the new NAACP Archival Award to recognize Dr. Safia Noble as a first recipient, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, to receive the NAACP President's Award. Um, the NAACP announced that Pri uh, Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, will receive the organization's award in recognition um, for their public service. Well, <laughs> I just made a mistake. <laughs> um, I meant to pull in all the stuff about Sophia Noble's award, and this is all about Harry and Meghan's award. So, never mind. But anyways, they created the new award, as the top says, that it recognized... Um, Safia Noble's work um, in technology, in um, you know, in fighting this very thing, in fighting the the technology, this predictive text, especially that um, predicts all this negative stuff about Black women. It is getting better, you know. When you, especially, you know, one of the big things was like, you know, you put in. Um, 
hairstyles, you know, maybe bad hairstyles for work, and all of it will come up as black women's hairstyles. And I tried it out, and there were there were some black, but then it was more multicultural. What I guess before would be all about all about um, black women being having the wrong hairstyle, the wrong outfit, the right. It was it was ridiculous. Google mm, Tristan. Y'all created this mess. <laughs> I'm glad you're trying to fix it. Absolutely trying to fix it. So, but it's a great, great um, relationship. I love the relationship with Dr. Noble and the Sussexes. Absolutely, and so deserve. She so deserve. Um, uh, so deserve this award. So, yeah, absolutely, an awesome for her. Um, and you know, not only did they again. <laughs> After all those amazing reasons, I mean, these are organizations that Harry and Meghan supports, whether it's, you know, do to donations, etc. Girls Inc., the Stanford Medicine Center for Compassion, Altruism, Research, and Education, Genesis, um, that's the home in Texas. We talked about it a couple of episodes ago. That's the home, um, the home for battered women in Texas that they've repaired their roof during that ice storm and that ice storm hit and they their roof caved in and Harry and Meghan went in and, and um repair their roof and give them food and all of that stuff provided food for their home and stuff harvest home is i think that's the home for pregnant women that's in la that um megan worked with p and g and procter and gamble and send them all of these um you know uh diapers and all of that stuff for their babies it's a home for uh pregnant women loveland is a foundation that loveland the Loveland Foundation is a mental health um, organization that the squad actually, we also did a fundraiser for them as well. Um, Mind as well is also mental health. The National Law Center, National Women's Law Center, obviously what it is, helping women uh, make sure they have good legal, legal advice. And Pressman and URL are media outlets, um, grassroots, I guess, media outlets that they are supporting as well. So, I mean, it's incredible. And this is just some, not all. That's not even all the organization that you know that they are a part of and that they support you know in the a lot of this is in the u.s um you know and that's not even talking about the organization in the uk that they have supported and are supporting we talked about a couple of them for harry especially so um it is amazing I, you know <laughs> The amount of work that they do, it is just, it's unbelievable that this um, art, well, again, is well, not even two years old or maybe coming up on two years old, but they have been able to do all of this They without the royal um, whatever, you know, with all of that um, boo-ha-ha -ha with the royal family. Oh, you can only serve when you're a member of the royal family or if you're you're a working royal or whatever nonsense they, they came up with that they can only serve and do duty if you are a working member of the royal family. It's so insulting. And so I'm so happy that, you know, Meghan and, and, um, Quinn and Harry coined the, coined the services universal, which we have adopted and so... <laughs> We have thrown back at them in so many in so many ways, but the incredible, incredible work that Harry and Meghan do um, with these organizations and so many others. I mean, again, I'm talking to the choir here, but it's just it's so clear that they don't just go and cut. I mean, they don't cut ribbons or just show up and wave and smile and get fo photographs. A lot of times with their engagement and, and whatever they do with these organizations, we learn about it after the fact, <laughs> you know? And so it is just, I mean, it is amazing what they're doing. And I'm so happy that like-minded people have recognized their work and are, as, and are awarding them and rewarding them for it in the sense of giving them honors and lifting them up and say, you know what? Yeah, you guys are doing great. You are leading the way in so many of these things. You are not waiting for someone to tell you what to do. You're not running away from the struggle. You're not, you know, just, you're not showing up for um, um, the red carpet and the photo. You're in there running to the struggle as, um, you know, Chef Jose Andrea said about them that they run to the struggle. 
And so it is just so fantastic, um, just the work that they have done with all of these organizations. And these organizations are just so happy that Harry and Meghan are with them and supporting them and really <laughs> just being there and, um, you know, just you know whether you know whenever they do something with harry and megan it's just like they just are on social media promoting it because it's the, the, the platform is so huge that any mention with them just that goes around the world and a lot of times it gives the, you know open them up i mean yes it opened them up for trolls coming at them you know for a minute but it also um gives them the kind of clout that they can people who probably have never heard of these organizations will look at them and be like, Oh, maybe I want to support them as well. You know, and that's why you, you know, you use this stuff. So that way others would know about what you're doing and maybe come and support you as well. So I am just like, so excited. I mean, again, they are the best Royals. <laughs> they are the absolutely best Royals. And finally, they're the best royals because right now everybody is going out to vote. Everyone is, people are going to be, you know, their state and local elections, which are, you know, a lot of times it's like, oh, the presidential election because that's the glamorous one. But these elections are where literally in every community, these are the people that vote, um, that, you know, affect laws in our com that really literally affect our communities, our city, our state, you know, our state, um, uh, state laws and all of those things and these this is the most important election yes the um presidential election those things are fine uh, uh, important but this is the one these are the people that can change whether it's election laws whether it's you know pick something policing whatever it is these are the elections that make changes so um one of the things i love about harry and megan even you know when they first talked about voting um when uh, that orange one was in the, hos in the hospital, in the White House. Um, you know, they talked about voting and everybody, you know, as, well, Shutter Island really were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're talking about voting. Well, I'm so glad that, you know, Megan, of course, is like, Megan is America. She can talk about whatever she wants. You know, she, it's her favorite duty to vote and talk about it. And so here we are again for these local elections going on in um, the Archwell um, is encouraging people to vote. And it's it's why, because Mandana Diana, Diani, who is a president of Archwell, she is a co creator and co-founder of I Am A Voter, which is an organization that really advocates vote for voting. And so um, she and uh, someone else, I think, is it, um, I forgot what her name is, another one at, who is a member of Archwell that's really into advocating for a vote and they're also part of um i am a voter and but archwell reminding people to vote says archwell foundation believes in the importance of civic participation no matter who you vote for voting matters because it affects your family your friends your family and community we all have a voice and this one is key and this is one key way to use it and help shape our future october 28th is a vote early day a couple of days ago um in the united states civic holiday focused on helping every voter know how where and when they can vote early some states have already started their early voting program and many start soon and also if you go on the website, um, and I didn't pull it in here, but on the website, um, if you want reminders um, to you know, make sure you re remember that you need to go vote, whether you vote for early or in the day, um, they can give you a reminder. So you just text a number, text Archwell a number, and you can get um, reminders to go vote. So, um, and can I, you know, yes, this is important, but even more important, Archwell, have some things they're hiding from us. Look at that water bottle with the Archwell logo. I have voted in an Archwell logo. They are hiding. Now, so we've seen the Archwell t-shirt, the Archwell hat, the Archwell um, sweatshirt, and now we're seeing the Archwell bottle. And it's like, when exactly are they gonna, you know, reveal their swag? <laughs> I was like, hello, we want, we want the Archwell stuff, so 
Who knows if they're ever going to put that on sale, but we're seeing all this stuff now with Archwell. So, well, actually, the, the sweatshirt was the archetype. It says archetypes, but I'm sure that it says Archwell, too, because obviously archetypes is on the Archwell. So, we look forward to seeing more Archwell stuff. So, but anyways, vote. <laughs> there you go. So, again, this is another reason why our faves, Harry and Meghan, are the best royals. So I just think it's fantastic. I am just so excited about what they're gonna be doing. Obviously next year the book is coming out and we'll see what there'll be more they'll be doing in 2022 and also in 2023. So that's it guys. Thank you guys so much. I'm gonna be posting this at some point later on today. And um, our moderators usually coming on, Lydia, Trish, Nelly, Karen M, Julia Rock, and Cookies and Cream. Thank you guys in advance for the amazing, amazing work you do keeping our space safe and wonderful and free of trolls. And I appreciate it so much. And thank you so much. I'm going to move myself because we have two new, um, let me just uh, move myself out of the way here. We have two new Sussex um, uh, Two Cents crew members. Ah, I move everything out of the way. And um, yes, so Taiwo Taiwo and Dara Eshel, welcome to the Two Cents crew. This is your Montecito shout out. I just want to say thank you so much to you for coming on and supporting our channel out of the kindness of your heart, along with all our other Two Cents crew members. Thank you all so much for really your kindness. I mean, you don't have to do any of this out of the kindness of your heart. You decided to support our channel and I appreciate every, every single one of you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome Tyra Tyro and Dara Eshel. This is your Montecito shout out from New York. <laughs> Anyway, I'm just being silly. Anyway, thank you guys so much. And I'm going to put back my sticker, my um, my subscribe, so everybody remembers to subscribe. And you two can join our Two Cents crew and join our, yeah, and become a member of our Two Cents crew. And um, our Gold Star supporters, who supporters with uh, super thanks, super stickers, super chat, um, PayPal, Cash App, um, merchandise how any all of the ways that you support us thank you so much for your support i appreciate every single one of you thank you thank you thank you thank you and that's it guys i appreciate all of you i'm going to drop this at some you know later on today it is not alive it is just a video and um i just wanted to just sit down and um you know again among us in the squad this is preaching to the choir but others who may not know or who are very much new and probably never went on the archwell website um don't know about any of this so all of the links to everything i talked about today is going to be in the show notes a lot of them just click on the archwell link and you'll see all of it there you can get all of the information that you need and others you'll see links there as well so thank you guys so much um i appreciate you um Again, I'm going to go blind with this music until I figure out what on earth is wrong with my headphones part of this thing, why it is not working. And so anyways, I'm going to pull up this music and we are going to go out and now we're going to go use the song. So... I love you guys. I will see you next time. Have a fantastic, fantastic day. Bye. Snatches.